I feel sick, violated. Um, I don't, I just, it makes me sick. My name is Amy Doris. I am from Florida. Um, I'm a former model and actress, and I am here today to talk about an incident that happened a long time ago with Donald Trump, and um, I think it's time to speak out about it. And how are you feeling about speaking out about that today? It's a little nerve-wracking, but I think it's, you know, it's time. At the age of 24, I think I thought I could do just about anything, and I didn't have enough fear, even though I probably should have, given other things have gone on in my life. I was very social. I was very outgoing. I was a little naive, <laughs> I think. Um, it was September of 1997, and I was invited by Jason Bin, who I was dating at the time, um, to go to New York, and part of that trip was going to the U.S. Open. We ended up with Donald Trump. You know, I went to his office, I was at his home, uh, the Versace Memorial, like various events in a span of a few days. You know, he was very flirty, came on very strong um, right away. Um, you know, it seemed, you know, kind of typical of certain guys, you know, people who just feel like they're entitled to, to do what they want and flirt, and even though I was there with my boyfriend. We pulled up at the U.S. Open and we got out of the car. There were people asking for autographs from Donald, and um, then I actually even signed some autographs myself. Um, at first it was like, I was fine, and then, um, you know, I was just meeting people, and it was nice. I was getting a lot of attention from everyone because I was like a new person. In the box with Trump, there was a lot of executives. Mary Lou Whitney Vanderbilt, who was a socialite and part of the Vanderbilt family, and her husband. Um, I was talking with them quite a bit. I, w I went to the restroom, and um, which, by the way, is there's a door that you go through, and the restroom is hidden behind it, so it's not visible to anybody that's in the box. When I came out of the bathroom, Donald was waiting outside the bathroom, and initially I thought that he was waiting to go to the bathroom, um, but that wasn't the case, unfortunately. Um, he, I don't remember what he said, but he was talking, said something, and, but he, I was just like, no, 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 and I was like la nervous laugh laughing like, no, you know, get away. But then he just grabbed me and he just shoved his tongue down my throat and I was pushing him off. And then that's when his grip became tighter. And, um, you know, his hands were kind of, it's like very gropey and all over, you know, my, my butt, my, my breasts, my back, like everything. And, but he was just like, his grip was hard. You know, you couldn't pull away. I was pushing his, his tongue out of my towel. Uh, my mouth with my teeth. Uh, it, was, it was pretty uh, traumatic and jarring and shocking. Um, it felt like it went on for a long time, but it probably didn't. I don't even know. But I couldn't get him to let go. I've always described this as like he, it felt like a, an octopus was hugging onto me. Um, I know a couple other people have said the same thing. Um, but it's truly what it felt like. You just picture those suction cups on an octopus and they're stuck on you and there's like, you're trapped. That's how I felt, I felt trapped. And did you tell him to stop? Yes, I did. But it was like, clearly no meant yes. <laughs> it's the kind of... Sorry, and I know it's, 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 it can't be an easy thing to, to talk about. Um, it's making me nauseous to talk about. Okay, and tell us what happened after, afterwards then. What, what did you do afterwards? It's not completely clear. <laughs> I just remember feeling very uncomfortable. Um, I called another longtime friend of mine who lived in New York and told him 
exactly the same thing. I just described to him what, what had happened. And um, I think I just felt safe knowing that I had someone in New York that I could go to. God forbid, you know, it got worse. So, um, yeah, I just kind of just kept going with the flow and kind of put it in a compartment. And I'm like, I'm going to deal with this later, you know, that sort of thing. So some people might ask uh, why you've chosen this moment to come forward with this allegation. What do you say to them? Um, I chose to come forward now because um, I feel like I've spent a lot of years not speaking up about it. I feel sick, violated. Um, I don't, I just, it makes me sick. And um, I think that I've been really quiet about it for a long time, and I don't know, I just feel like I don't want to be quiet anymore. And then how are you feeling about coming forward now? I don't feel safe, but I don't feel, I don't care, because people need to hear this. You know, I've had a couple friends that I've talked to, and they're like, well, it seems like you might just want attention, or, um, you know, he didn't rape you. And I'm like, no, he didn't rape me, thank God. A violation is a violation. When you invade someone's space, it doesn't matter if you were raped. Uh, it's, it's sexual assault, and it's not okay. You don't touch someone unless they want to be touched. And I did nothing to encourage him to touch me. And now I feel like my girls are about to turn 13 years old, and I want them to know that you don't, you don't let anybody do anything to you that you don't want. And I'd rather be a role model. I want them to see that I didn't stay quiet, that I stood up to somebody who did something that was unacceptable. And I, I want people to know that this is, the, this is the man, this is our president. You know, This is the kind of thing he does, and it's unacceptable.